right, good Monday evening, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm on this final evening of March. We've got a lot to catch up on on Weather for Weather Geeks this evening. We had our storms last night. Uh, we have lots of interesting things coming our way this week, including it looks like quite a bit of rain later on in the week and perhaps into the upcoming weekend as well. I uh, joined Chris Serenelli here in the Weather Center last evening and uh, covered for him on 21 News at 11 last night while he anchored the uh, newscast. And that's because we, of course, had storms approaching and it was possible that we were going to see some warnings and things like that. There were actually no severe thunderstorm warnings issued for any of these cells across our area because there was a general weakening trend. Now, that being said, a line did perk up as it entered Mercer County, and we had you know some fairly extensive uh, damage here in the Hermitage area, especially the south side of Hermitage. A lot of uprooted trees. Roof damage was pretty common. A couple of uh, viewer pictures uh, sent in to us. Don't forget, you can always uh, send us weather pictures via email, weatherpix, P-I-C-S, at WFMJ.com. You could submit uh, storm, uh, uh, storm-related, weather-related pictures right on the Storm Tracker 21 app as well. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, uh, the Storm Tracker 21 account on Instagram as well, for weather-related pictures and everything else. But yeah, these storms really, you know, perked up. Uh, briefly, as they went through the Hermitage area in, in western Mercer County, they weakened, they continued the general weakening trend after that. But uh, uh, the National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh today, I chatted with them some um, this morning into this afternoon, and uh, they're not going to do a survey on the, this uh, cluster near the Hermitage area. Uh, strongly suspect it was not a tornado, but it was a, a straight line wind event. The line was bowing out a little bit, a bow echo, if you will, and what we call a rear inflow jet. Strong winds coming in behind that bowing segment. Probably what was responsible for the upwards of probably 70 mile per hour winds that rolled through the Hermitage area. Now, you know, it's another great example of wind is wind, of course, because a 70 mile per hour wind is roughly equivalent to a low end EF0 tornado. It is unlikely that this was a tornado, but the damage was the same as a low-end EF0 tornado often produces. You have uprooted trees, you have roof damage, um, you can have power outages as well. And so, again, it was loud, it was noisy, it was, it was damaging, um, but that doesn't always mean it was a tornado. Of course, the storm reports were more numerous off to our south and west, and this was as advertised. You know, we talked about this in the lead up to Sunday, that the severe weather threat would be much higher out here. And all the storm reports uh, bear that out. Lots of tornadic activity, uh, especially in Michigan and Indiana. The National Weather Service office in southwest Ohio in Wilmington did uh, find a couple of tornadoes, uh, including this one north of Cincinnati. And these are the uh, officially the first tornadoes in Ohio of the uh, season so far. Um, this one uh, that I'm going to query here, north of Cincinnati, an EF0. Um, estimated winds of about 80 miles per hour. So again, just about 10 miles per hour above um, the winds that uh, struck the Hermitage area at about 12.35 last night. This one was at 8.40 p.m. as the line was moving through western parts, oh, pardon me, western parts of Ohio. So uh, storm surveys uh, may, you know, they may continue uh, for a little while out in the western half of the state, but thus far, at least a couple of confirmed tornadoes. But it is the final weekend, or uh, final weekend, final evening of the month of March. So we're uh, done with the numbers here temperature-wise in the month of March. We're going to finish the month above 5 degrees, uh, more than 5 degrees, I should say, above the average. This stands in pretty stark contrast to our cold winter months, December, January, February. Pretty cold stretch, of course. But, you know, March... I oftentimes complain about, but truth be told, recent marches have not been that bad. We've had more mild winds than chilly ones of late. But this march, like a lot of marches, did have a lot of variety. We had a high of 24 back on the 2nd. We had a high of 77 on the 14th. And the final weekend of the month was pretty mild, with a high of 71 Saturday and 64 degrees on Sunday. Now, in the uh, nationwide view, we weren't alone having a fairly mild month. When you look at temperatures compared to average nationwide, it's hard to find much blue. California, one exception. A few mountainous areas in Arizona up towards the Grand Canyon were a little cooler than average. A couple of spots in Florida were a little cooler than the average, but generally speaking, the lower 48 had a pretty balmy month of March. Now, locally, in terms of precipitation, we made up a lot of ground over the last 24 hours or so, we finished the month with a deficit, but the numbers uh, in the minus column, if you will, were, were more impressive before the weekend. We had 0.85 officially on Sunday at the Youngstown Warren Airport. We had three straight pretty rainy Sundays, um, but uh, it was a fairly dry month. Now, 
April is unlikely to be a repeat of that, and that's because mostly because of the fast start. Check out the rainfall expectations over the next seven days. I think there's going to be some big flooding problems for the Ohio River Valley and the Mississippi Valley as well. There could be some double-digit rainfall totals down here closer to Memphis, Cape Girardeau, uh, kind of probably southwest of Cincinnati, but even up the Ohio River towards Louisville, towards Cincinnati, and over towards Marietta, Parkersburg, you know, there's going to be a handful of inches of rain over the next seven days. Now, for us in northeast Ohio and northwest PA, uh, I don't think rainfall totals will be as impressive, but still quite a bit of rain looks to be coming our way, and that no doubt has influenced the Climate Prediction Center outlook for the month of April. Because of the first weeks, or the first week, I should say, of the uh, month, the pattern for that week, uh, odds favor a wetter than average month overall up and down the Ohio River Valley and into the mid-Mississippi Valley as well. A drier than average month favored in the, in the southwest and in parts of Florida as well. In terms of temperatures, this is the CPC, Climate Prediction Center forecast for April. I really don't have a disagreement with this. I think much like March, it'll be kind of a an up and down month. And, you know, that's not too surprising in, in the spring season. I think next week is going to be awfully darn chilly um, with a moderation in temperatures after that. And it looks like uh, roughly equal odds of the ultimate outcome for April being warmer than average or cooler than average. I kind of doubt that we ring up a plus five or so like we did in March. It may be much closer to the average than in March, but uh, I, I wouldn't place my bets on the entire month being a chillier than average outcome uh, despite what we have coming our way next week. What we have coming our way this week is a setup that bears some similarities to the weekend system. This is the day three outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, um, showing a level three enhanced risk in many of the same areas that just had an enhanced risk on Sunday. So Cincinnati, Dayton, Indianapolis, the entire state of Indiana basically, um, Chicago, and right down the Mississippi River Valley. For us, again, I kind of think the slight risk is too far to the east. I'm not impressed at all with severe weather chances around here even though I think we'll probably see some thunderstorms Wednesday afternoon, and there could certainly be some thunder overnight Wednesday night. I just don't see this being much of a severe weather threat for us. Maybe some bouts of heavy rain coming our way Wednesday night. With the Day 4 outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, they did highlight or define an area here with a, a, a risk of severe weather from about, well, say, Route 224 on south. Again, I think this is a little too far to the north. I think the severe weather chances would be more down in here, um, southern Ohio through Kentucky down towards Tennessee and into uh, the Arkansas area as well. So there's going to be more busy weather this week for us. It'll be more rain than anything, but not on Tuesday, the first day of the month, April Fool's Day. Clouds will break for a good deal of afternoon sun, but we'll be no higher than the 40s Tuesday afternoon. Clouds will return then Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Now, this run of this model is pretty unimpressed with the thunderstorm chances Wednesday afternoon. Some of our other modeling has thunderstorms kind of like this, rolling through during the first part of the afternoon. That's that's more the model consensus right now. It's possible that these farther north solutions end up being right, but there's more models than not that suggest that uh, you know thunderstorms will probably roll through eastern Ohio as we go into the first half of the afternoon. Some elevated instability. They could be loud storms but I really doubt they're going to bring much in the way of strong winds or anything like that. But it could be a little bit noisy for a time Wednesday afternoon. Better chance for wet weather region-wide than overnight Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And, and during the wee hours of Thursday morning, you know, we could have some bouts of heavy rain, uh, some claps of thunder as well. Again, I don't think true severe weather in terms of strong winds is all that likely, but uh, there could be some real downpours at times early Thursday morning. We get a little bit of a break probably Thursday afternoon and before rain tries to return Thursday night, maybe a little bit of a break on Friday before rain tries to return Friday night into parts of the weekend as well. And here's a look at the current computer model spread for our area specifically over the next seven days, taking us through next Monday evening. There's a general spread of two to four inches worth of rain. And I, I kind of think that's the right idea. Now, a place like Cincinnati, could, could they see five, six, seven inches worth of rain over the next seven days? Yeah. I don't think we'll see that around here, but two, three, four inches could result in some rises in area rivers. Um, certainly, uh, especially in, in the more flood-prone uh, tributaries like Eagle Creek in southwestern Trumbull County. Beyond the weekend, uh, the story will cease being the rain for the time being, and it will become the chill. Tomorrow's 45 is kind of a preview of what we have coming for a few days next week. I don't think this is just a one-day deal next week. It's probably at least a few days where we are in the double digits below the average in the temperature department. Again, probably beyond this 10-day period, there's probably some moderation 
um, as we go past April 10th. But from, well, roughly the 5th or 6th through the 10th or 11th, that looks like a pretty clammy stretch across our part of the uh, country. All right, long video tonight, but lots to talk about on Weather for Weather Geeks, and uh, much of the, uh, or many of the videos this week will be kind of packed with information as well, as we've got a lot to keep track of in terms of rain and severe weather chances and up and down temperatures and all that good stuff this week. So hope you'll uh, join me again on Weather for Weather Geeks Tuesday evening and during the rest of the week. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Monday night.